morning guys it's Jeff with HKS Systems Lock and Safe hope you're doing well today uh, today we've got uh, a job we're going to be going out on in the morning um, it's a Gardal depository safe lock um, safe they've been using it for the last 10-15 years all of a sudden it's stopped working it's never had it serviced um, although the sergeant and greenleaf which is what's in there it's a pretty robust lock in my opinion there are issues with it um, I'm going to show you what some of them are going to probably be for this safe especially um, it's a mechanical so I mean you know everything mechanical is just like a car you need to service it occasionally even if you use it very infrequently even sitting there you should probably have it serviced every five years at least um, they've never had it serviced so they got all their money in there it stopped working so what do we got? Well, we got a uh, Sergeant and Greenleaf. It's, pro it's going to be the 6700 series. I'm not exactly sure which model's in there, but they're all pretty similar. Um, some are made cheaper than others, but they're all pretty much similar. Um, so we're going to have three wheels in there. You can see I took this one out. Um, sometimes you have a couple issues. Let me zoom in here. I'll show you some of the main issues you'll probably have. Um, so that's one wheel. You can see if you look really close, there's gears in there. Um, really, really close in there. That's how you unlock it. So you would put your key change in there, and this brass hub in the center unlocks, and it allows you this to free spin. Sometimes those from use become a little bit worn or free play, and they'll unlock and they'll shift. Um, it's not very common, but it happens. Um, another thing is this movable fly section. That's how the numbers get transferred from one wheel to the other. So if that is not moving correctly or is broken off, it's basically not going to be able to transmit the, the next number into the line. So this would be wheel um, of the three wheels. It wouldn't be able to go to the next wheel for the numbers. And uh, that's done by contacting that little nub there on the fly to the next wheel and uh, if you want your ten dollar word of the day it's Spiralux this is your Spiralux washer that goes on the top of those to keep them all in place and uh, you could freehand and take those off I actually have a specialized fifty dollar tool which I don't know if it's even worth it unless you do a lot but I do a lot um, to remove those it's basically like a wave washer splits in the middle um, and you don't want to crack that and you definitely don't want to lose it because then you're shit out of luck you ain't going to a hardware store to get that so that being said um, sometimes it's an unlocked wheel sometimes it's a broken fly and this could all be figured out by dialing diagnostics meaning you don't have to have the door open I just have to spin the dial and uh, feel for what's going on in there um, the way to do that it's sort of involved but Basically, you park all the wheels either right or left at 50, and you go to uh, either way you park it, you go to the opposite direction, and you snap that dial 10 before the actual number you parked it on, in this case 50. You go to 40, you snap it in the uh, same direction you're going, and you should feel that wheel pick up. Then you can do it one more time, should it have that wheel pick up again. Then you could do it one more time again, see if it's a four wheel lock. Um, that'll also tell you how many wheels are in the pack. Good to know if you don't know what's behind the door. Um, that's something you could do with the door set, uh, completely closed. So no big deal there. So let's see. If that's not the issue, what's the issue? Well, a couple issues it could be. Um, so I'm just going to show you really quickly. This one is, uh, these are both cutaways, obviously. One's out at a cutaway. One's out at a thing altogether. So... Um, you can see up here, let me just zoom out a little bit so you can get that. Zoom in here. Uh, you can see up here, that is the spring. So the spring is meant to push this whole section down, the nose and the actual fence down into the driver section. Um, so you can see this one I took off. Um, so I'm just showing you why this is sometimes a problem. 
So you would be dialing it. Boom, it falls with the spring. It's going to be fine. You're going to be able to push that in. Sorry, I need to hold that at the same time. With the spring, you'll be able to push that in. Like that. The spring's going to pull that down into the fence section there. Um, that's great. But what if, in theory, that spring breaks or that spring is so worn it's got no power left in it? Well, why would that matter? Gravity is still going to do it, isn't it? Yes, it is. If it's, if it's handed like that, yes, it will. However, on these safes, they're handed like that. So if that spring has got no pressure and you dial it correct, what's going to make it go in there? Or what if it's even worse, if it's handed like that? Very common. There's one of four ways to hand a lock, and that's one of them. So if that lever spring breaks, no pressure to pull it up. You're shit out of luck. you got to call me. And same as vertical up. Same thing. Even if it's dialed right, it's not going to pull itself in. Um, there are a couple ways you could get it to fall in if you're lucky, but uh, usually on uh, the handing like this or down, yeah, probably not. So either way, we're going to go there. We're going to take the scopes. We're going to take the drill rig. I should be able to dial it open, and I should be able to dial it with dialing diagnostics, figure out what's going on, if it's going to be a fly. I'll be able to count the wheels right away. I'll be able to tell if it's going to dial open. I will try to uh, take into account if there's drift in the pack. That's easy enough. So this should all be done within the first 30 minutes. If those aren't going to work out, we're going to have to drill it. And then, uh, so drilling it is a couple different ways you could do it. Um, I'm not going to go into how to drill a safe because that's really sort of a security issue. I don't uh, like to typically put that out there, but if you do need that service, give us a call. We do this for a living. We're not here for tech support. So people from all across the country and a couple out of the country like to call and just BS about why their safe doesn't open or how, sh how can I get into my safe. I'm not tech support. I do this for a living. So if you're not willing to pay me, Please just call Sergeant and Greenleaf. They could talk to you. They have people there that are trained to talk to you. I do this for a living. I don't want to answer the phone and talk to you for 30 minutes. Not trying to be rude, but uh, yeah, I work for a living. And you know, how would you like me to come to your place and just tire kick for a half an hour, and then I find out you're in the Bahamas? <laughs> what good is that going to do me and you? I don't live in the Bahamas. I wish I did, but I don't. So if you need service and you're local in Illinois, 847-204-7046, Northern Illinois.